What's up, YouTube? It's your boy, RobotPanda15, here, bringing you another Valkyria Chronicles episode. And we are actually going to be getting into the meat and potatoes of this game, starting off from here on out. We are going to get access to a lot of content here in this chapter, so I'm actually going to save the battle for next episode, and I'm going to walk you guys through all the new stuff we're going to have today. So, let's rock and roll right out of that first... Uh, cinematic there. In March of 1935, the Empire began its invasion across Gallia's eastern border. Do I have to, like, hit X? Okay, Maximilian, never mind. Maximilian, commander of the Gallian invasion front, built his army around mobile armor. Girlendio and the other fortresses along the border fell to his tanks in quick succession. Bruel's fall in under two hours was typical of villages in the Empire's path, and the road to the capital bore a steady flow of refugees. This battle music, though, not battle music, but that music was intense. Land Greece, Gallia's capital, a town secure and stable since ancient times. Within its walls stood the castle Rand Greece. And within its unicorn spire resided Cordelia, Gallia's princess. Supporting Gallia's policy of neutrality was a system of universal conscription. Under it, all schools required military training each year. In the event of a war, Citizens were then drafted into the militia to defend their country. That's how it works here in the States. Except, you know, As the, conflict the draft the East is not worse, always both enforced Welcome during times of war. found themselves no exceptions to that fate. These are my new digs. Oh, my uniform. I should get changed before reporting in. Layers, binoculars, a compass, and a map. Everything you need for a nice hike. Or combat. Welcome? Can I come in? Sure, it's open. Oh, you're already changed too. Let's see. Alicia looking fine in the combat uniform. Not bad, not bad. You look good, actually. So, how about me? Do I look alright in this? Convincing? Let's take a look. Yeah, you look fine. You wear it like a pro. Really? You're not just saying that? Of course not. You look tough. I like it. Oh, good. I was worried it looked kind of silly. No way. That plating on the back? It's like a coleoptered exoskeleton. Beetle-tastic. Coleo what? And did you just say beetle? Uh, Welkin? My man Welkin here knows how to give the ladies them wet panties. What kind of girl wants to hear that she looks like a bug? Huh? Not just any bug. A rhinoceros beetle. King of the insects. Who wouldn't want that? Uh-huh. I guess I'll just try to take that as a very Welkin sort of compliment. Tell me about that scarf. You've been wearing it since I met you. Oh, this? It's part of my uniform from the bakery. Is that right? <sighs> oh, sorry about that terrible yawn. I don't want to forget the time I spent busting my buns baking. No pun intended. I plan to keep wearing it until I can get back to manning the ovens again. 
That's great. Once you do, I'll be first in line to get some of that bread. Is that a promise? Well, I'll be sure to have plenty of it ready and waiting for you. Absolutely. Hey, if you're ready, we should probably go see the captain now. Come in. Excuse me, ma'am. Galleon Militia Enlistee Welkin Gunther, reporting for duty. Ma'am, Galleon Militia Enlistee Alicia Melkiot, also reporting for duty. I'm Captain Eleanor Varat, commander of this regiment. Gunther, you're promoted to lieutenant. You'll be leader of Squad 7 now. Ma'am. Enlistee Melkiot, you're promoted to sergeant. You'll be under the lieutenant's command. Understood? Ma'am. What do you know? It is you. Nice coincidence, huh, Welkin? Faldio? I had no idea it's that you'd It's Faldio. Yep. Yeah. Now that there's a real war going on, I joined up. Pretty much all the officer and training boys are here just like you. You know each other? Yes, ma'am. We knew each other at university. Welkin was in science, and I was in archaeology. And just look at us now. No archaeology or science. Looks like the two of us are studying more, I guess. Looks that way. It's good to see you. And you. That'll be all for now. There's a strategy briefing later today. But you still have time. Time for you to catch up. You'll be spending a lot of time on the post and in Randbreeze. They'll be your new home. So get to know them. That'll be all. Report back in time for the briefing. Until then, you're dismissed. All right, this is something new. Uh, this is called the headquarters right here. So we're gonna go straight on into the squad barracks and you can kind of see what kind of troop force we're working with right now. So starting off the bat here, we have Welkin as our tank commander driving the tank. Uh, you can kind of see his equipment. He's got a galleon one, a grenade and ragnade, as well as his combat suit and down in the clothing, which isn't giving him a defensive buff. But down at the bottom there is very important. That's his likes. Those are the people he likes. So you have Alicia, Juno, and Audrey are the people he likes. So if you pair Welkin with those units, like have him stand next to them when he's shooting, uh, there is a high probability that the unit that he likes will also shoot with him. So yeah, next we got Alicia, and she likes Welkin, Noche, and Dallas. We'll meet the other two later. Well, we'll meet all these guys later in just a second. And then we have uh, Bridget Stark, also known as Rosie. Uh, she's a shock trooper, and she likes Largo and Cherry. And she carries a Max M1 uh, light machine gun or submachine gun, whichever one you kind of you could kind of suit your fancy. Uh, the shock troopers are kind of your main assault force, quote unquote. They can take a lot of hits and they can dish out a lot of damage, but the only issue is that they don't have nearly as much AP as the scouts do. All right, next up we got a Lancer here. This is Largo Potter, one of our first Lancers that we'll get with a Lansar M1 anti-tank rocket is what those are. And these guys actually have the blast suits, which help them deal with the rounds the tanks shoot at them. So you got Rosie is one of his likes, Hans and John as well. So let's get out of the barracks here and let's go pick up some more uh, members for the squad. Now this is a process you'll probably you do around. once or twice. Welcome. This is the command room. Use it to structure your squad. And Captain Marat here is going to tell us all about the command room and all about the different units. And volunteer recruits. Now that I think of it, Squad 7 is still short on soldiers, isn't it? I'll explain how this works. This is the master list. The recruits have all been assigned classes based on their talents. I should probably touch on the five classes, just so we're clear. First off, you have the scouts. Just like the name suggests, they'll be your eyes. Their best asset is their mobility. They can go out, collect intel, then make it back safely. 
Or in my case, from how I like to use the scouts, is they can go out, engage the enemy, and then fall back to a strong pointing position. That, and a keen eye for enemies. A good scout can spot a man in tall grass from a hundred yards. That, is, that, that last fact is debatable. That comes at the price of firepower. Their job is spotting enemies, not taking them out. Now, see, I don't know why she says this. Um, as you saw in the past two episodes, we were only we only had scouts for our units, and they are actually very proficient at taking out enemies due to their semi-automatic rifles that they carry. Their rifles are very accurate, so it actually helps. They can actually take out enemies pretty well in groups of two. They're the ones to break through enemy lines and clean up. They offer excellent offense and defense. As far as combat goes, they're as good as it gets. Uh, shock troopers, usually when I run fire teams, I'll run two scouts and a shock trooper. Kind of have the scouts up there to do the damage to the enemy, and then the shock trooper comes in as to do exactly what they said, clean up. While they lack any specialized techniques, they also don't have any obvious shortcomings. Think of them as the least finicky unit in your squad, Lieutenant. After them, we have Lancers, then anti-tank units. They're critical when facing armored targets. Their purpose is pretty self-explanatory. In most cases, they're the only way to stop a tank. Lancers are the only way to stop a tank if you don't have a tank, but in which case we always have a tank. They're also well shielded from explosives, which conveniently includes tank mortars. So yeah, these guys are really good when you dig them in on, on sandbags or in trench lines. Very, very useful for that kind of combat. Sadly, they're slow and weak to gunfire. Their limited ammo could also be called a drawback. So my ideal fire team when I play this game is for, for an all-out infantry-based squad, I would run two scouts and two assaultmen. For anti-tank duties, I'd run two scouts, an assaultman, and a uh, lancer. Basically, you want to get the synergy of your squad members correct in order to get in order to make those kind of fire teams, quote unquote, where they're all kind of Change shooting off each other. We have the engineers. They handle supplies and perform combat support. Engineers are nice too. So instead of running a uh, two scouts, you can actually run a scout and an engineer. Uh, if you're running a mechanized kind of squad that a roll with Welkin's tank. So usually I'll run uh, Welkin Alicia and then an engineer and an assaultman depending on what the unit synergy is like. But it's a very good combination. Treat the wounded, even repair tanks on site. That's a very crucial point they mentioned is they can restock other units ammunitions. So they carry around kind of, they're they're kind of the support um, and medic class in Battlefield rolled into one. So they are really... It, actually, they're pretty much every single class in Battlefield all, roll, all rolled into one because they can repair tanks as well. They can place sandbags for cover, disarm mines, repair towers, you name it. That's another crucial point. They can create cover, they can disarm the mines, repair towers, they can repair sandbags, they can do literally everything. Engineers are very vital to have. Their actual combat skills are very low. Think of them as combat facilitators. They run the same types of rifles that your scouts have, so that's why I say they make, they make for a good drop-in, plug-and-play replacement if you need an engineer in a squad. Lastly, we have the snipers. They can shoot down targets from a considerable distance. Ah, uh, yes, my favorite class is the sniper class. You won't find better soldiers for marksmanship and range. They can hit targets I can barely see. Sniping rifles also come with scopes that work to augment a sniper's natural eyesight. Drawbacks include low mobility and defense. If the enemy gets them alone, they're done for. Snipers you want in the, you want as like your third or fourth line back. Uh, you don't want them in combat that much. And you'll actually see a lot of people when they play this smartly. We'll get in, we'll get into the actual combat when it happens, but. When you have certain outposts that you need to take, so yeah, we have a 20-man squad. That's a very important, but four of those slots are already taken for Welkin, uh, Alicia, Rosie, and Largo. So we got 16 slots to work with. 
So, here we are. Looks like we got Hermes, who doesn't like anyone, and the potentials are really nice as well. These are like extra perks that each unit has. So, Meadow Bread, meaning that it helps them relax and enhances their defense if they're standing in a grassy field. Uh, Fancy's women, so having women around makes them want to look good. Making them shoot with greater accuracy is really good. And tight spaces like trenches create a suffocating feeling leading to a drop in attack power which is very important for scouts to be able to do they need to be able to entrench themselves a lot so let's go through the list here um so we do have Noche right there Alicia and Homer bonds with very well um hmm oh but we have Susie Susie's awesome. So she hates scout trooper or she hates uh, shock troopers. So um, you want to keep her away from uh, shock troopers as much as possible. But that's what makes her really good for engaging lancers and everything else. Plus, this country bred one is awesome. Bear dirt uh, raises her accuracy. And uh, if she's around her close friends, Elise and Newt. Uh, she'll become an even better she'll she'll have more attack power basically on that one so we'll pick Susie up she's Susie very nice Evans, to have sir. I realize I'm inexperienced but I'll do all I can welcome to the squad Susie all right so let's go to our squad real quick so Noche, Dallas Elise Newt Larg or Cherry and then Hans and Jan are Hans and John Jan however you say his name are the uh members we're looking for. There's Juno, who pairs with Welkin very well. And there's Cherry. This this member right here, Cherry, I remember in my first playthrough I did with this. She links with Rosie, and she also links with Ted. Now Ted links with uh, a guy called I'm Alex Cherry's that is very it's useful. It's silent, but because um, it makes it she cherry is very crucial towards your squad synergy here so we have cherry on the squad she links with ted and rosie so rosie leads with largo or links with largo Lar largo largo words are a struggle today guys rosie links with largo who will then link with Yon, giving us another lancer so we'll have a squad of two lancers there on top of one shock trooper a scout and if Ted is on here, Ted's not on here, damn it. But no, Ted's important because he links with Alex and Vice, which is very, very crucial. No, Ted's important because he links with Alex. Alex links with this guy, Vice. Uh, but let's see, do we have anybody else? Yes, we do. We have Aika. Aika is also very important because she links with Vice. Hey there, I'm Aika Thompson. I'll try my best. Ika, Sounds my bad. Working? I'm very bad when it comes to pronunciations. So yeah, we got Ika there. All right. Nancy's okay. Ooh, she's got Bug in a Rug, which will help her out a lot, and Good Buddy. So we'll pick her Hi, up. Nancy DeFore. It's so good to meet you. Now, typically in missions, you only run about eight people. So it's very crucial to kind of select Vice which Engelbar. eight you want to go for. Let's go kick this war in the teeth. I'm gonna pick up Vice, so when we get Alex and Ted later, we'll have very good support for them. Um, we have Hans here. We have Kobe. Um, yeah, here we go. This is a very crucial potential to have if you can find it. Is the Impator one? Pure hatred for the Empire yields a boost in accuracy, which is nice. And then a uh, child of nature right here. He doesn't like being in the city paved roads very much. But we do need another shock trooper. Let's see what we got. Here we go. Jane. Jane will link. Jane, because Jane likes Hans. Jane will link with Potter Largo. I almost said his last name first. The military mindset getting into my head right there. Jane will link with um, Largo through that link with Hans. Building another really good syner building really good synergy on that team. The name's J 
Do I have Hans? I guess I need to grab Hans now. Range Challenger, reporting for duty, sir. What's that voice? So yeah, there we go. Haynes will be our main link between Largo and Jane there. So what do we got here? Yeah, one, two, three, four, five scouts. One, two, three, four. Four shock troopers and one lancer so far. Now we're getting to the lancers here. This beautiful bastard, we need to pick him up ASAP. He likes Largo, Montley, and Walter. And we have Walter on the list there. Oh, yes, hey, we need soldier. to pick you up. I'm Jan Walker. I'll fight with everything I've got. This beautiful motherfucker is hilarious. So we got him. Let's pick up Walter. Because Walter links with Frieza, with Pleasure Chen links with, with Cherry. Oh my gosh, when we get Frieza, you'll understand what I mean by building a great squad through that. Here's Ellis. She links with uh, Susie and Homer. We'll pick her. Nah, I won't pick her up. Here we go. Here's Dallas. Um, she doesn't like men, but she... So she will lose accuracy around men, but will gain accuracy around women. And she cannot be used in desert engagement, Money but she's a really right. nice to uh, engineer to have, so we'll pick her up. Then we have Hermert here, or Herbert here, it likes Motley and Ramsey. There's Ramsey there. Ramsey likes Elise. I might as well Hi. pick up Elise then. My name's Elise. Because I can build up another really nice good squad me. with Elise and Susie. I'm Ramsey Clement. Uh hey. There we go. Alright, now here we go. We got snipers. You typically want to pick up one or two of these, and there's my bay, Marina Wolfstan. She's got pollen allergy, which means that she can't be used very effectively in outdoor engagements, but Lone Wolf and Night Vision are very, very important, especially Lone Wolf. For being a sniper, you're not going to be around the team very awesome, very, very much, so Lone Wolf is helpful for when the enemy does start to close the gap a little bit or you are doing counter sniper operations with uh, Marina or with your snipers so you can evade those sniper rounds much easier so we'll pick Marina her up Wolfstone at your command yeah and uh, we'll pick up Cesare as well he's not my favorite of all of them but because of the darks and hater one but He's desert bred, sniper killer. Those two are very nice for dealing with enemy snipers, so we'll pick him up as well. Regard. And I'll handle things my own way, thank you. Now we got three slots left over, so we need to really kind of oh here we go, Hector. It links with Alex and Vise. He is very crucial for building that crucial base defense unit right there. So we'll pick him up. Um who else? We have Edie right here. She links with Ramona, Dallas, and Selena's. We'll I'm pick Edie her up. Nelson. Perhaps you've heard of me. I'm sure we'll get along swimmingly. And we got one more slot. Let's see. <laughs> Let's take another look at the squad here. So we got one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five Lancers. I got one, two, three, four, five Shock Troopers, two Snipers, two Engineers, and one, two, three, four, five Scouts. We're going to pick up one more Scout here. Um. Da -da -da -da. Let's pick up. Yeah, let's pick up Juno. Even though she's got metal allergy, so she, it's, so the thing is she likes Wilkin, but she has metal allergy. So that doesn't make much sense there. But Born Leader is very, very useful because when she's got any sort of allies nearby, which scouts work in teams, she'll gain a defensive boost. 
Um, this one sucks though because trenches are very important for the scouts to be in, but we need to pick her up for that. Reporting for duty. Looks like I'll be joining you in Squad Seven. But there we go. That's the squad. Pretty routed out, if I do say so myself. Well, feel like you've struck a balance. Come back anytime you'd like to adjust your squad. And you'll usually get more. more recruits to choose from. So there she goes. She said it for me. Oh, and all the recruits go through training together, so they're all ready for combat. They'll be at the same level as the rest of the team you've taken into the field. So basically, that's a very crucial point, meaning that instead of individual unit training, it's uh, based off of their class that they are. So scouts will all level up together, and you, you I'll show you guys some of that here in just a second. Using the benefit of their experience. Trust in your own judgment and pick a team you know you can work well with. Now, the downside to that system that means that you, you don't gain you as much of an attachment to certain characters as you would like. However, I, j I tend to stick with characters no matter wow. what. Squad leader's a lot of responsibility. Come to think of it, Valdio's heading up Squad 1, isn't he? I wonder if he's off sorting through this stuff now, too. I'd better get a move on. All right, and now we'll get to that part that they were talking about leveling up. Welcome to your worst nightmare. I'm the guy who's gonna whip you lazy blobs into shape. Still, I can't work miracles here. No amount of drilling beats real combat experience. I want you all to go out there, kick some imp tail, and then show me what you learned. So basically, on your combat operations that you do, you will gain experience points, and these points can then be used. I will train that experience into something you can actually use. Level you bums up, but don't go trying to hog all the glory. A squad's a team, and we got no need for stars. You will train as a class and level up by class. Scout level two, scout level three. You get it? When the scouts level up, that means each and every one of them goes up that level. And there you have it. You hear me, maggots? Any of you think he's better than the rest of the team, go home now! All right. Now I'll show you lowlights how this whole thing actually works. It ain't complicated. First you go out there and fight. Then divvy up that experience here. There we Once go. Once the experience you cram into a soldier class clears a set amount, it'll level up. Picking which class to level up and when is your job as the squad leader. Now give it a go. Train all you want. I've got all day. All right, now we're going to level up the scouts because they are very crucial towards uh towards better they are very crucial. I lost my words there. They're a very crucial element of your squad. And we'll also train up the snipers here. Eh, screw it. We'll just bring everyone up a level. I got enough XP for that. I got no use for tears. Sweat, sweat, sweat. There we go. Good work, maggots. You're one level closer to human. Looks like that's potential out of the Lancers. Now, through level ups, you'll gain, like he just said, new potentials. Looks like and a new potential out of the snipers. You'll gain uh, new potentials through that. That's the very crucial point they make in that one. So we're going to level up our scouts one more time here. You're better than this. Push those limits. Good work, maggots. You're one level closer to human. There we go. So we got them all leveled up nicely oh, now. And there's one more thing to add. Sometimes leveling up a unit class will unlock a hidden potential in them. Which we discovered through that. You can think of potentials as the natural abilities your soldiers have inside them. Those abilities will form a big part of your strength in the field. So keep them in mind. Other times, leveling up a class will earn you clearance for a new order. 
Here, as long as we're talking about it, I'll teach you a classic. A real golden oldie. So orders are kind of like, um, very high level commands. They cost a lot of CP to use, but they tend to come out very, very strongly. And there's a guy that will teach you specific orders, which is very orders nice. He's very, very nice to have on your team. Leader. They can save your tail. It doesn't take a genius to see that leveling up your soldiers is the best way to beef up your squad. The soldiers will get stronger, and you just might unlock new potentials and orders. All that just from me working you sorry bums into the dirt. I just hope you maggots are ready for a real workout the next time I see you here. Alright, so yeah, that's the training field for you. And now we're gonna go to the R&D facility. We don't have the uh, cemetery uh, or the war memorial man. cemetery. What can I do for? Huh? Wait, I know that insignia. You're Lieutenant Gunther, aren't you? I knew it, man. I've heard about you. That evacuation at Brule was just wow. Protecting a tiny life in the middle of all that slaughter, man, man. Lieutenant, you're good people. You get all my respect and then some, bro. What's going on, Leon? I could hear you from clear across the hangar. Oh, Casey, check it out. It's Lieutenant Gunther. He's the man, man. <laughs> Sorry about him, Lieutenant. He's like this all the time, I'm afraid. But where are my manners? I'm Kreese Cherney. I'm training here as a mechanic. Oh, oh, and I'm Leon Schmidt. But just call me Leon, bro. I'm your boy. So, Lieutenant Gunther, what brings you down to R&D today? We do work here on weapons development, making upgraded weapons and equipment. And that includes rifles and machine guns. We can even soup up your tank. Of course, research expenses aren't cheap. With rifles and other firearms, we'll mass produce new models as they're developed. You won't have to worry about making enough for your squad. We'll outfit them. And that is a very nice bonus to have. For tanks, you can upgrade the baseline performance of the body itself, or develop optional parts that you can add on to tweak out its specs. Right. You can choose which optional parts you want in the tank equipment section. Come in any time and make adjustments based on the needs of the operation at hand. All right, so yeah, tanks, all that stuff. Uh, basically, you're playing Tetris when you equip new stuff to your tank. So here we have the Edelweiss. He's got an 82 millimeter armor, anti-armor cannon with an E rank, 82 millimeter mortar with an E rank, and a timer mag T1 machine gun with an E rank as well. But the aim there is the crucial aspect of that. Uh, you'll see here in a second. We're gonna. Oh, we can't do any of that yet. So we have to develop weapons first, that's right. So if we go to the analyze here, and we go to body enhancements, these, um, which section is it? Right here, treads and other, as well as the attack support. These are, those are all, um, so yeah, both these right here require, what's the term I'm looking for? They require block sizes to fit into your tank, whereas the body enhancements do not need anything. But we're going to go over to rifles here, and we're going to actually buy the Galleon 2, with a, with, which has much better damage. Same, uh, same range, but way better damage. So we'll buy that. The accuracy boost you, on bro. it. Now we'll have to play more missions in order, in order to unlock more weapons later on down the line, but that's that for now. And we'll get this one as well for the Mags M2. And our Lansar, we'll get that for it. That'll increase the damage. Okay. Increases the damage pretty decently. And we will definitely buy that for the GSR2. There we go. And 
We're gonna buy a uniform upgrade so we can get at least a little bit of defense on our troops. And we will also buy an armor upgrade, which will give us some anti-blast support. This one's And that's pretty much all we can do for that. So now we'll go on over to the Edelweiss and we'll do some body enhancements here. And I want to do um, some frontal armor, which will give us plus 30 defense go, right bro. there. And then I also want to do this right here, the hardened plate, which gives us crit defense plus you, 50. And here you see the Tetris kind of thing. So that block you see on the right side uh, I have to find a place to put this so you only have so much space you can put stuff in on it which is what's crazy about this one so the site upgrade will buy that too that'll give us uh, plus five accuracy and it's also a uh, one by one slot so we'll throw that in there and that's all we can really that's all we can buy for now so that was a pretty decent well, sir, right was there. that helpful we're working here around the clock to make possible tomorrow what's out of reach today. Come again a little later. We'll do our best to have something useful for you by then. Yeah, you better come back soon, bro. I am all fired up to work on stuff for you. And there you have it. So this is the HQ, and that's pretty much all the stuff you can do in it for now. We're going to unlock something else later on couple things later on but here we go we're gonna go up we're gonna keep watching these episodes up to the combat op and then we're gonna end it off there so yeah headquarters tab that's where we just were in <sighs> but for now we're just gonna keep going on the episodes so yeah triangle that's how you select the different tab and that's how you go to the headquarters and all that but yeah well let's continue watching these episodes up until the combat operation and we will do the combat operation in the next video. Welks. There you are. I've been looking for you. Hey, Ys. How'd your enlistment go? No problems? I registered as a tank pilot and mechanic. Maintaining and operating the Edelweiss will be my responsibility from now on. I think it's nice that we'll all be on the same squad together. I think so too. So, what are you up to now? The tank's hangar space is just through here. I was just carrying some Ragnite fuel back. It's used to power the tank, and also for the turret-mounted cannon rounds. I guess I'm just more used to seeing it in street lamps and medical compounds. Seems like everything is Ragnite-powered these days. That stuff is everywhere. Not enough of it for some people, though. It's the source of a lot of conflict. They say the Empire's invading only to get at all the Ragnite in Gallian soil. Oh, that's right. I had something to give you, Welks. What's this? Father's flare gun. It was in the barn, but I thought you might have some use for it. Another hand-me-down. I gave it a once-over. It might be old, but it's still serviceable. I didn't mean... I just can't believe I'm a tank operator now. Thank you for this, Ys. I'll do a spot check on the Edelweiss now, to make sure it's ready to go at any time. Alright, we'll get going for now then. See you later. Alright, looks like this is the mission briefing right here. I'll cut to the chase. Here's your mission. The Great Vassal Bridge was just taken by the Empire. It's a key strategic position. The Great Vassal Bridge? It's a major drawbridge crossing the canal in Vassal, just outside the capital. That bridge is a part of the central transit artery, leading into Randgreaves. Our mission is to take it back.
The Empire has been running a blitz, with their shock troops outrunning their defense. Our 3rd Regiment will retake the bridge before defensive reinforcements can arrive. How quaint. The militia holding a little strategy meeting of its own. Look at this motherfucker. How long were you planning on hiding out in here, Verrat? My apologies, sir. We'll depart soon. Whatever. They're just country mice. It's not like they'll be much help. And this is something I highly disagree with. Uh, as far as the U.S. military goes, you know, all the branches have their banter back and forth. That's all it is, it's banter. You know, they, they all think of each other as equals in the long run. And they will, they will give their lives for each other. More help, perhaps, than your army unit that couldn't hold the bridge in the first place. Hey! Every unit's a fighting unit. That's the Regardless, way I see it. Vassal remains a critical position. We'll reclaim it immediately. Well, all good. See that you do. Who is that? General Damon, commander of the Central Forces. Central Forces? That's the army branch the militia was folded into, right? That's right. They say the general's an aristocrat. He looks down on the common militia. That doesn't make any sense. Right. Now that the war's begun, we all need to band together and fight to keep Galia safe. Who cares at this point whether you're in the army or the militia? It's ridiculous. Gentlemen, let's return to the mission. We'll begin by taking back the Western Bank to gain a foothold for reclaiming the bridge. Lieutenant Gunther, I'm assigning Squad 7 to this mission. It's your first maneuver, so be smart. Yes, Captain. The other squads are on patrol. Stay sharp and be ready to help take back the bridge. I'm counting on all of you out there. Now move out. <laughs> Yeah, the skirmishes. So skirmishes are like little side missions that don't really have much to do with anything. Uh, it allows you to gain some more XP and money so you can unlock better stuff if you feel like you need it. Uh, soldiers lost in those battles can die though, so you gotta be careful about that. But for now guys, we're gonna end it off here. This is like a 43 minute episode. I told you guys these would get a lot longer. but. Yes, they are now going to be even longer because of the battles that we're going to be having. So if you guys enjoyed, leave a like down below. Subscribe for more content and always leave a comment. I try to read any old comments that I possibly can and I try to reply to as many as I possibly can. Either way, Panda, check in out.